Good day, my name is Blue Suit, and today I'll be going over my review of the early access open world post apocalyptic survival crafting RPG called Dismantle. In Dismantle, you play as a nameless survivor, emerging from your shelter years after society's collapse, only to find that where there were once humans, there are now mutated monsters and tainted beasts. Armed only with a crowbar, you'll need to fight, explore, level up, and craft to survive the island's dangers long enough to escape to safety. After exiting the vault, you'll be quickly introduced to the game's primary progression system, which is all about breaking stuff. Your starting crowbar can only break down the most basic of items, chairs, coffee mugs, bushes, and so on. As you improve your gear, you start moving on to breaking down bigger and bigger things, in turn earning more and more resources. A coffee mug will only give you one piece of ceramics, but a toilet will give you two. The biggest issue though with all this crafting and gathering is that it does become a bit of a grind due to your early game inventory space. For a long time it felt like I was tethered to the nearest bonfire and I couldn't go too far because I would soon have to come back to unload my haul. It wasn't until the current endgame when I had a massive backpack that this feeling finally subsided. Eventually, however, you can start breaking down things that give rare ingredients like the fabric from couches or the electronic wirings of a microwave. As you start to earn these rarer ingredients, it becomes possible to start crafting the necessary supplies to begin farming and hunting and cooking. The cooking mechanic in Dismantle is definitely a unique twist compared to most titles in the genre. Here you don't have hunger or thirst meters, but when you enjoy a meal for the first time, it will imbue you with permanent stat and ability upgrades. Recipes are rare and the ingredients aren't easy to come by, but cooking and eating them all will make for a very, very strong character. In Dismantle's current state, it doesn't offer much in the way of a story, but the open world map is still massive and a treat to explore. Every sector of the map has a different feel to it, and the northern and southernmost areas require special gear to fend off the cold and heat respectively. After crafting a rope, you can even deep dive into some of the ancient tombs that are scattered around the map to solve puzzles and earn big, legendary, in-game crafting ingredients. The one downside to the exploration, though, is the enemies. They're great, but currently I've only found about a dozen or so different enemy types, with 90% of them being the same dried up, crusty old melee enemy that you meet in the very beginning of the game. They're fun to fight at first, but you quickly learn how to dispatch them without much trouble long before the game moves on to harder enemies. That being said, there are a myriad of bosses to be downed throughout the campaign, and each one was challenging and satisfying to defeat. The leveling system is really what turns up the addictiveness of Dismantle. Nearly everything you do, be it slaying monsters, breaking stuff, or even just turning ingredients into your base storage will give you experience points upon leveling up. You can choose from a handful of perks and unlock new crafting recipes. The perks that are available when you level up are pretty standard, from extra melee damage to more hit points, or even a perk that gives you more perks. Just don't do what I did and take the perk that gives you more experience points because the early access level cap has been brought down to 20 from 99. The new recipes that you unlock are set up like a classic skill tree where you'll, for example, have to learn the throwing knife skill before you're able to craft the deadly fan of blades. And most of these recipes can be upgraded as well once you craft them, increasing their damage or ammunition. Dismantle is still a very early access title, and while the developers have said that they only plan to spend three to six months in early access, there's still a decent chunk of the game that's currently inaccessible. For one, only about a third of the map is currently explorable, which is surprising to hear because it already seems pretty huge. Secondly, the building mechanic will be missing from the game when it first launches, which will be a big disappointment for many players as building has become a genre staple. But once it is released, it could solve a lot of the game's early grinding troubles. And lastly, much of the recipe tree is still unobtainable. This one's not much of a bad thing, however, as the developers have stated that they are looking for input on what cool new trinkets and weapons should be added in before the game's full release. You'll be able to pick up Dismantle when it launches into early access on November 6th. This is by far the most ambitious project to come out of developer 10 tons, and it's clear that they are swinging for the fences because this game is huge. Even though there is a large chunk of the game currently still under development, the sheer volume of polished, addictive content in the game is staggering, so I'm valuing Dismantle at $26, and I'm excited to see how they work with the community to fill out the rest of this game. 
I hope you enjoyed this review of Dismantle. Come see me on Twitch where you can watch our reviews in progress five nights a week. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Until next time, peace.